Hello everyone. In this video, we'll be discussing about the biological membranes. Biological membranes, in the sense, plasma membrane or cell membrane. So we are all belong to eukaryotic type. So we'll be discussing about the cell membrane in eukaryotic cells because other than eukaryotes, prokaryotes doesn't have any cell membrane. So biological membrane means cell membrane in eukaryotic cells. So what are the characteristics of biological membrane? So that is one is uh, like uh, which is giving your trilamellar uh, appearance and which is having a width of 50 to 80 angstroms it is a dynamic structure why because dynamic structure it is like a surrounding border it's like a wall which is covering of all the subcellular organelles keeping them inside okay the thing is you take indian map like they have we have borders right so there are borders so to make what this territory is belongs to India. So outside the border belongs to other countries territory, right? Same way each and every cell in our body is having a proper territories. Okay, which is marked by the biological membranes and what is the importance of this biological membrane? So without a packed structure, no subcellular organelle cannot function, right? The importance of uh, biological membrane or cell membrane is it will be useful in cell to cell recognition and at the same time transportation of like a useful substance from outside to inside at the same time release of useful products into the circulation and also giving uttermost function protection so biological membrane is providing the protection to the subcellular organelles and for the smooth functioning right and biological membranes are amphipathic in nature you know what is amphipathic amphipathic is nothing but they are made up of hydrophilic as well as hydrophobic substances so the membranes which are asymmetrical okay why because there will be irregular distribution of proteins over their membrane okay and the carbohydrates are located only on the external surface okay that means proteins will be present in the outer surface and also in the inner surface but carbohydrates they present totally over the outside okay that means they are present only in the external surface and they do have specific enzymes located exclusively the outside and inside of the membrane. Okay, the enzymes which are present exclusively outside and inside of the membranes. Composition to talk about the major composition is by lipids and proteins and carbohydrates in minor quantities. As I've said, carbohydrates are only attached to the outer membrane, okay, not to the inner one. So this is a typical cell structure you can make out here different colors have been used in this diagram so the blue color which is like phospholipid bilayer bilayer in the sense lipids you are all aware lipids are insoluble in water then how come a cell is soluble in the body okay in the circulation right the thing is as i said membranes are having amphipathic nature that means lipids have hydrophilic head and hydrophobic tail so these are all hydrophobic tails will be packed inside and all the hydrophilic uh, heads will be outside and hydrophobic tails will be inside. So you can make out see here, see here these are the head which is hydrophilic and the tails which are hydrophobic. So that's why they are packed inside. Okay. So this is a outside and inner side of the cell membrane and you see the proteins here so this one green color okay pink color purple okay and uh, orange so different proteins are there okay so these proteins are in association with phospholipids so they are known as glycoproteins okay and again types are there so that we will discuss the proteins which are present in outside the membrane which are present in inside the membrane Okay, and you can see here glycolipids, the carbohydrates which are in association with the phospholipid bilayer, they are known as glycolipids and the carbohydrates which are attached to the proteins as an external surface, as I mentioned, which are present in the outer surface of the uh, membrane that too in contact with the proteins. Okay, so you see here the width and dimensions of the membrane, you can say 50 angstroms, 25 angstroms. So it is made up of phospholipid bilayer, hydrophilic head and here these are in middle hydrophobic tail and transmembrane protein from outside to inside. 
okay this protein from outside membrane layer to inside membrane it is present it is acting like a communication okay communication of the cell from outside to inside plasma membrane you see here the typical again one more uh, picturistic uh, representation so glycolipids which are there outside peripheral protein that means these are the proteins which are present outside okay outside the membrane and in middle of the phospholipid bilayer okay we do have other form of lipids that is cholesterol okay and the content of cholesterol is very very important okay the yellow colored what i am marking here this is nothing but cholesterol okay and this cholesterol presence okay and the concentration or amount of cholesterol will gives the fluidity to the membrane okay will give fluidity to the membrane and you can see integral proteins which are present inside the membrane and what is the popular uh, theory okay you will be studying at the school to explain the cell membrane that is singer and nicholson fluid mosaic model fluid mosaic model is nothing but sandwich you can say okay lipid bilayer okay it is known as lipid bilayer you can see here this is one layer and this is another layer this is one two so there are two layers are there that's why lipid bilayer singer and nicholson model is nothing but a lipid bilayer and the theory is like fluid mosaic model okay they are proposed like fluid mosaic model and this fluidity mainly because of the amount of cholesterol present in the cell membrane so the lipid bilayer was originally proposed by dabson and danielli okay and later the structure of bimembrane y uh, with the help of fluid mosaic model by singer and nicholson so to discuss in detail about the lipid bilayer or like fluid mosaic model okay so the main contributors of this lip, uh, fluid mosaic model phospholipids okay phospholipids are arranged in bilayers with the polar head groups that means they are water soluble hydrophilic facing towards uh, outside extracellular side and uh, uh, that means outside and uh, cytoplasmic side okay extracellular side and uh, cytoplasmic side and hydrophobic core the packing the tail which are water insoluble to the inside and the distribution of phospholipids is such that choline containing phospholipids are mainly in external layer and ethanolamine and serine containing phospholipids are in the inner layer and there is a purpose behind the presence of uh, this um, phospholipids especially in choline because choline they uh, carry nitrogen base which is involved in communication okay so the communicative substances has to be present outside rather than the substances which are not communicating and which are lacking nitrogen base so phospholipids to discuss about phospholipids most common okay and they are all made up of long chain fatty acids like palmitic acid stearic acid oleic acid okay so arachidonic acid so all these are linoleic linolenic all these there okay and simplest is phosphatidic acid okay it is simplest is phosphatidic acid and example phospholipids we, uh, we will we have studied already in detail in lipid chemistry lecithin cephalin phosphatidyl serine phosphatidyl inositol and cardiolipin so there are all the types of phospholipids and they are the examples for glycerol phospholipids the main alcohol present in them is glycerol you see here in the picture outside of the cell and inside cytosolic side and uh, external uh, external outside of the cell so sphingomyelin is also there glycolipid that means the lipid which is attached to the carbohydrate that is known as glycolipid and cholesterol is there yellow colored one and phosphatidyl choline and phosphatidyl inositol phosphatidyl ethanolamine and phosphatidyl serine okay so these are the basic composition of phospholipid bilayer in the membranes so each leaflet of like what to say 25 angstrom thick with the head portion of 10 angstroms and tail is of 15 angstrom in thick the total thickness is about 50 to 80 angstroms the lipid bilayer which is showing free lateral movement of its components hence the membrane is said to be fluid in nature so why and i mentioned the fluidity of membrane is mainly depends on the concentration of cholesterol and the fluidity enables the membrane to perform endocytosis and exocytosis so when it is fluidic in nature any substance from outside to inside it can take up that is known as endocytosis at the same time any unwanted substance to be sent out or any useful substance to be transported by exocyte from inside cell to outside so this fluidity enables both the process endocytosis and exocytosis however 
the components do not freely move from inner to outer layer because it is having a rigid membrane okay and this during apoptosis this flip flop movement occurs that means what happened the totally cessation of transportation across the cell membrane okay and during the cell death once the cell completes its lifespan okay the transportation uh, across the membrane will be ceased so that the waste materials uh, and the other substances to be over occupied inside the cell and causing cell lysis or cell burst and uh, as i mentioned the cholesterol content of the membrane alters the fluidity of the membrane and cholesterol concentration increases the membrane become less fluid and the outer surface but more fluid in the hydrophobic core okay so this shouldn't be high cholesterol content that means it alters the fluidity of the membrane the effect of cholesterol membrane is different okay the effect of cholesterol membrane fluidity is different at different temperatures at temperature below the tm okay melting temperature that is known as increases fluidity and thereby permeability of the membrane as temperature above the tm cholesterol decreases the fluidity so it sees the transportation across the membrane the nature of the fatty acids also alters the fluidity of the membrane the more unsaturated fatty acids increases the fluidity unsaturated fatty acids means the presence of double bonds in the fatty acids like linoleic linoleic pufa polyunsaturated fatty acids okay pufa okay pufa play major role in fluid membrane for, uh, sorry this uh, biological membrane formation so if it is having more unsaturated fatty acids increase fluidity increase fluidity in the sense more permeability okay so the peripheral proteins exist on the surface of the bilayer okay they are attached by ionic and polar bonds to polar beads of the lipid so glycoprotein the association of lipid and protein by which bonds ionic and polar bonds and they are known as lipoproteins you can say proteins in uh, association with lipids so composition you can see amount of cholesterol like types of phospholipids like lecithin cephalin phosphatidylserine sphingomyelin glycolipid okay plasma membrane nuclear membrane outer mitochondrial membrane inner mitochondrial membrane endo endoplasmic reticulum myelin sheath of the neuron so the type of cholesterol uh, and the amount of cholesterol okay lecithin cephalin their composition i have clearly mentioned this uh, chart okay and the percentage of the lipids total lipids present in the different membranes because subcellular organ also made up of membranes nucleus is having a clear cut membrane that is known as nuclear membrane mitochondria is made up of two membranes outer and inner mitochondrial membranes and they vary in composition of lipids and endoplasmic reticulum myelin sheath they are also membranes so their lipid content also varies so lipid rafts they are nothing but sphingomyelin and uh, glycolipids cluster to form semi solid patches known as lipid rafts sphingomyelin is a type of phospholipid okay the alcohol is sphingomyelin uh, sphingosine here okay so the phospholipid bilayer glycerophospholipids are there here in lipid rafts the type of phospholipid is sphingophospholipid so that is sphingomyelin and this sphingomyelin attached to glycolipid uh, to form a cluster that is known as lipid raft so this is enrich of cholesterol and it is has a specific role in endocytosis and receptor mediated signaling cell to cell signaling this lipid rafts play major role so here so these are the lipid rafts there are particular sick uh, this orange colored okay this orange colored patches you can make out here this uh, orange colored the marking things what i'm showing in the picture that orange colored patches are nothing but lipid rafts which are in Uh, combination which are combination of sphingomyelin glycolipid okay sphingomyelin glycolipid so that's all about the lipid content of the cell membrane thank you